I love doing Scorpio placement videos, not only because we're talking about Scorpio, but because I get to channel a little bit of my inner vampire. You know what I mean? Hola, my beautiful lotus flowers. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're into nerding out on everything astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation, this is a community for you. Today we're talking all about the Scorpio Mars placement and what this means is at the time you were born, Mars was moving through the constellation of Scorpio. It is not the same as having sun sign in Scorpio. That is completely different. We are going to start off the video with an introduction to Mars in case you're not quite sure what that means in astrology. Then we're going to talk about some of the general primary traits of this placement that might show up and we're going to finish the video with two empowering tips if you have this placement or you know somebody who does. I don't just like to dump all the information on you. I like to try and leave you with some tools for empowerment at the very end. So be sure you stay tuned for that. First, let's briefly discuss what Mars means in astrology. First off, Mars is the planet of our quote-unquote animalistic instincts, action, ambition, desire, and passion. It rules over the zodiac sign Aries, but it's also the co-ruler and traditional ruler of Scorpio before Pluto came into the picture. The Mars placement in our birth chart can give us insight on how we physically take action in the world, what ignites our inner fire, and how we tame or transmute that fire into reality. Whereas Venus is about what we are attracted to in the physical realm, Mars is more so how we actually act on, pursue, and express those desires. It is the primary conductor of our innermost passions, and it gives us a direct pathway on how we assert ourselves in the world. Remember to check if Mars was retrograde at the time that you were born because this also affects how its placement manifests in your life. When you pull up your natal chart, check to see if your Mars has a little R or RX next to it. This indicates that that planet was retrograde at the time of your birth. Now for the general traits of somebody who has Mars in Scorpio. First, it's important to remember that Scorpio is the fixed water sign ruled by Pluto, co-ruled by Mars, and symbolized by the scorpion. Number one, this placement is heavily connected to the growth and transformation that stems from intense emotional experiences. Scorpio was traditionally ruled by Mars before Pluto became its primary ruler. So Mars is actually amplified and often empowered here. Mars is considered a fiery planet full of passion, whereas Pluto, the modern ruler of Scorpio, gives more of a frigid, dark energy, but offers the same energetic intensity as Mars. So with that intense energy of both Mars and Pluto present in this placement, this is often going to be a person that harbors vigorous emotional energy, and it's likely that they're very physically connected to those emotions. Pluto being a planet that represents deep transformation from the darkness and shadows of life, it's not unlikely that somebody with this placement has a close relationship with karmic encounters and life-altering events. With this transformative energy being infused with the rapid fire energy of Mars, this is probably a person that lives a very emotionally volatile life. And if they're not facing their own inner volatility, they might be dealing with the emotional volatility of others around them. This is not just an energy that harbors its own emotions and harbors its own complexity. It tends to trigger other people's emotions and kind of comes in direct contact with other people's complexities. It just tends to be a magnet for those types of experience for themselves and for others they meet. Because of this, it's likely that they've experienced their own fair share of very impactful, life-altering, life-changing events, or they've gotten into their own crazy situations because of their own bold, impulsive decisions, etc. But because this is a placement that may have encountered more karmic events and more life-altering events than the average person, they gain access to some of the deepest channels for growth more so than other people. If they are willing to transform these emotional experiences into 
a life lesson, then they are granted the power to convert these hardships, these unimaginable hardships into some type of physical reward or positive path in their own life. Number two, their emotions have infinite depths that serve as valuable insight into the deeper lessons of life. Scorpio is one of the water signs and the water signs are well known for their connection to emotions and intuition. Having Mars in a water sign means that the person may be very physically in tune with their intuitive feelings, sometimes causing their emotional reactions to be more abrasive and impulsive before they've had the chance to think. What this can also mean is that this person is deeply connected to their own sense of spirituality and creativity. As we discussed in the previous trait, Scorpio Mars has a lot to do with karmic encounters and the transmutation of their intense experiences into something valuable. Oftentimes, this placement will transmute those deep experiences into a spiritual or creative path, not to mention expressing their traumas and experiences creatively or using them for spiritual growth can be a form of healing for themselves as well. For example, this placement has great potential to work in the psychological field or to become some type of spiritual healer. And this is because they are so in tune with the darkness they have encountered most likely they have encountered unimaginable darkness in their own lives and have had to overcome insane obstacles within themselves and outside of themselves and it's because of this that they can often understand those that a lot of people maybe don't understand i've mentioned before somewhere on the internet that scorpio is a very psychological sign when we think of Scorpio, we think about exploring the depths of something because this sign is correlated with the underworld. So when we think of the underworld, we think of something hidden, something mysterious, something that a lot of people are scared to dive into, but Scorpio is directly connected to. So because they're directly connected to all sorts of death, all sorts of karma, all sorts of tragedy in their own way, and this can come in a multitude of forms, because they're so connected to that, they are not only interested in uncovering and learning from those experiences, whether it's their own or other people's experience, but they're also interested in helping those who harbor a lot of darkness. Even if this person doesn't officially, professionally go into a field like this, if you have this placement or you know someone who does, then you probably are no stranger to the experience of having people easily open up to you. Or maybe it's even like a random stranger that you don't know at all, that you've talked to for the first time, and they decide to just spill their traumas and spill their problems onto you. And you're just kind of like listening <laughs> and taking it all in. And this can be a pattern for somebody with this placement because they can make for a natural therapist, but people often just pick up on their energy and their aura. They can often feel very comforted around this person. They can often feel that this person holds a lot of wisdom in their own way. And I'm essentially talking about somebody with this placement who has grown from their experiences, not someone who has stayed in their emotional volatility and become angry because of it and has fallen into their emotions because that can happen. But somebody who has transmuted, like we've mentioned, you're gonna hear the word transmutation in this video probably quite a bit. But someone who has transmuted those experiences into something valuable, into some form of wisdom for themselves. People can feel that with this placement. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And leave a comment down below if you have Mars and Scorpio or if you know somebody who does and your own personal experience with it. I'm always learning and I love to hear people who actually have the placement or know somebody who does. I love to hear your own experience. It helps me, helps everybody. We get to chat and yeah. <laughs> Number three, their strong connection to experiences and complex emotions can translate into undying persistence towards goals, beliefs, or desires. Scorpio is the fixed water sign. Fixed signs are known for their loyalty, persistence, and often having a stubborn streak. 
For Scorpio specifically, this fixed nature is usually present in their concrete determination towards life. Combining the tenacious spirit of Scorpio with the eager ambition of Mars gives us someone that is a true fighter in every aspect of life. In general, giving up is not really in a Scorpio's vocabulary <laughs> because they often take pride in their personal ability to overcome any challenge that's thrown at them and if you know Scorpio or somebody with heavy Scorpio placements, you probably have heard them complaining about a ridiculous obstacle that they had to overcome, but you can tell that in their complaint, they actually are taking a sense of weird pride in the fact that they were able to overcome this challenge and they were faced with this challenge, yet they didn't crumble like a lot of other people would. So you're just kind of like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I can tell that you're like, you're kind of boasting right now. <laughs> they can boast through complaining, if that makes sense. Scorpio Mars has a very similar energy, and if anything, this energy can sometimes be enhanced. Now don't get me wrong, a lot of Scorpio placements, Mars Scorpio is included in this, they are no stranger to the impermanence of life. Going back to the connection to death and darkness, this person has probably had a lot of situations where they've been forced to let go, whether it was willfully or against their will. And I think that one of the lessons for this placement is learning to let go when necessary because they can latch onto a challenge and see it as a challenge. And whereas this makes them very powerful, this makes them a force to be reckoned with because they do not want to give up. They do not want to let something go. They can, this can cause them to drive something into the ground and exhaust themselves and exhaust the situation that should have been let go a while ago. And this can be difficult for this placement to do but they are no stranger to having to do this. And they probably had a lot of experiences where they've had, they've experienced a loss of some sort. This doesn't necessarily have to be death, but they've experienced a loss of some sort or they've had situations happen where a lot of things have seemingly been ripped from their hands and they don't understand why. Well, Everything that we encounter is meant to be some form of a lesson, as harsh as that can sound. And I think that this placement is challenged to embrace, embrace the, the impermanence, impermanence of, of life. And if they have chosen to embrace that impermanence, then this can contribute to the great wisdom they gain in their lifetime and can make them that much more powerful in their lifetime. But with that being said, they are not the type to easily let something go. And we can learn something from this placement when it comes to remaining loyal and determined towards a certain goal, desire, person, situation, etc. A lot of people might let things go too prematurely. Like say we're talking about a Mars and Gemini. Gemini is a mutable sign. Mutable signs are known to be adaptable and they have a hard time fixating on something because they are all over the place. So we can learn something from a Mars and Scorpio where they have the ability to channel their focus into something and go full throttle, full speed ahead. And oftentimes the things that they attach that determination to are things that are very sentimental to them. This can be a very sentimental placement. <laughs> I'm sure when we envision Mars and Scorpio, we envision something, someone very powerful, someone very passionate, but yet kind of a force to be reckoned with, kind of like a cold fire, like a blue flame. Uh, somebody who looks cool to the touch, but they have a deep burning flame inside and you don't want to mess with them. But really, really they're a big softy when it comes to the things that really matter to them because they have an undying loyalty to the things that matter to them. If you've reached emotional importance to somebody with a Mars and Scorpio, or if a situation has emotional importance to them, no one can tell them anything. They're not giving up on that person, that place, that thing, whatever it may be, they're not giving up on it. Number four, this placement may carry a somewhat intimidating energy that makes their words and or actions carry a lot of weight. Now let's talk about the symbol of Scorpio, which many of us know is the scorpion. 
The scorpion is one of those creatures that we know as humans not to mess with. Don't, don't mess with them. They have a stinger ready to go at any moment. And this can especially be true with a Mars and Scorpio because again, we have the fiery passion and aggression of Mars present with Scorpio. Scorpio is already a passionate, assertive sign most of the time. So we have that energy being infused, infused with the energy of Mars. And it can make for somebody who can easily lash out in their own way. Now, since we're talking about this energy connected to a more physical planet, a planet that dictates a lot of our physical movement and how we actually carry ourselves and how we take action, this can definitely showcase itself in somebody who can either have emotional angry outbursts. This is probably not the person you're going to catch crying, having an emotional crying outburst, like maybe a Mars in Cancer or Mars in Pisces. This is the type of person that even if tears are in their eyes, they're going to fight you. <laughs> they're ready for a verbal battle. They're ready for a psychological battle. They're ready for it, right? Now, that isn't always the case. This person can also take a very passive aggressive role as well as many of the Mars, the water Mars signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, they can all be very passive aggressive. That can be a way that they naturally showcase their distaste with something. Um, but this placement, if somebody is channeling more of the Mars, they might showcase their feelings more outwardly. But if they are more connected to the Plutonian energy, the Scorpionic energy, and this is going to be determined by other placements in their bird chart. But if they're more connected to that Scorpio side, that fire may be contained within and they're like a silent, they're like a silent but deadly combatant. <laughs> like they're the type that will plot or they'll silently move around you or they'll think in a more strategic way about it these can both be very equally true for this placement but with all that being said whether this placement is an outwardly aggressive person or is a more controlled composed person it almost doesn't matter for some reason well, whenever we talk about Scorpio, we are thinking about someone quite magnetic. Scorpionic energy is always very magnetic. It always draws attention. People are just so enamored by Scorpio's mystery and darkness and everything that makes a Scorpio what they are. They're an enigma to a lot of people and therefore a lot of people take interest in them. And so when somebody has heavy Scorpio placements, that's no different. Whether they're seductive to somebody, whether they rub somebody the wrong way, or whether someone is just naturally drawn to that person and wants to get to know them. Whatever form it takes, they are magnetic to people's attention. So what this means <laughs> is that with that Scorpion energy, with that energy of the stinger, whether this person intends to sting or not, a lot of people may take their actions the wrong way or they may take their words the wrong way. I've actually known some people with Mars and Scorpio and they're the type of person that if, say they give like a pretty normal response to something, like say somebody asks them, oh, do you wanna go hang out here on Friday? They go, no. And they don't say it rudely, they just be like, no, no, thank you. That, even though other people might have said no to hanging out, for some reason, <laughs> that rubs the person the wrong way. The fact that this person with Mars and Scorpio said no to their invite, for some reason, stands out more than other people's rejections. It stings in a way that the person can't explain. So this person's actions or words heavily impact others around them. And this doesn't just have to do with the scorpion symbol. This definitely ties into everything we talked about before this trait, but all of it ties in together to make somebody whose presence is impactful, whether they like it or not. And a lot of times this person does not want to be like impactful. They don't want to be the center of attention. They don't want anybody bothering them, but people do still. <laughs> People still bother them because they just have an issue with things they do or things they do are very impactful to other people, whether in a positive or negative 
light. Now for a couple empowering tips for somebody who has Mars and Scorpio. Number one, ensuring frequent times of deep solitude will greatly enhance this placement's life. I thought this was perfect to mention right after we talked about how they have a big impact on other people, whether they want to or not. This is one of the reasons that deep solitude, real solitude, away from everybody, loved ones, friends, family, it doesn't matter, even if they live with a partner, solitude away from anybody's energy is so important. This is important for all the water signs because the water signs tend to be more sponge-like. They tend to really soak in other people's energies or energies of their environment and Mars and Scorpio is no different but the thing that really affects them is they like to be more low-key they like to be more discreet and hidden yet people always bother them people always have a problem with them people are always trying to bring confrontation to their to the forefront with them people are always trying to ask them a lot of questions people are curious about them and they just they need a break from that because that is not usually how they like to function. They don't like to function as a center of attention unless maybe they have other placements that are offsetting this. So having time where nobody is paying attention to them, nobody has access to them, nobody is questioning them, observing them, and judging them is essential for this placement sanity. And again, with Mars and Scorpio, this is a very psychological placement and a very emotionally volatile placement as we talked about. So this person can easily feel a bit insane if they don't get any of this solitude and it can cause an accumulation of small annoyances to turn into a wildfire if they aren't careful. And nobody wants to see this placement angry. <laughs> so deep solitude, having time in a quiet room to do what they wanna do is essential. Number two, working on the ability to effectively communicate emotions and situations could prove to be beneficial to this person's life. I'm not saying this because I'm saying that you like need to become a people pleaser and make sure that you're communicating in a way that pleases everybody. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. What I mean is you need to realize that even though you may think that you're sometimes being cordial or kind or gentle with others, a lot of times that may not be the case. <laughs> this can definitely be a placement where your natural mode of communication is either not communicating, you either keep everything in because you just don't wanna deal or you don't know how to express it effectively. This isn't really a verbally gifted placement unless you have, again, other placements that are offsetting that. So because of that, you either keep things in because you don't know how to express what you're feeling, or when you do express it because you don't know how to express it, but you're trying, you express it in a way that is very abrasive or rude or inconsiderate to others. And this is something to, obviously you don't have to do this, but it's just my suggestion because communication is essential. Humans are communicative creatures. We need to speak about things. This is why language is a thing. Languages of all sorts. Humans have created language for a reason because we need to speak to each other. We need to be able to tell each other important things, important emotions, things that are happening. And this can easily be a placement that doesn't disclose anything to anybody because they just either don't want to, don't feel the need to, they don't know how to, the list can go on. But really putting this into practice and being able to learn how to gently communicate with especially those that you love, those that matter to you, it will enrich your life. And I know that, like I said, this placement is a softie at heart. You know, they're full of a lot of passion, a lot of love, but they may not always be the best at expressing it naturally. They just might not. It just it happens, especially with Scorpio placements, that can really be an issue. Trust me, working on that in some way, however you see fit, whether it's starting with journaling, so that way you can start with communicating with yourself. <laughs> you can start with that first before you start trying to like actually articulate your emotions outward to other people. Try to articulate them to yourself because this can be a placement that also doesn't articulate their emotions or anything to themselves. 
they just it's it can it's just hard to explain it can be very confusing for this placement to deal with their volatile emotions once again if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below if you have scorpio mars or know somebody who does and leave a comment about your own experience and if you also have any empowering suggestions for others i'd love to see it we're all always learning and i love to chat with you guys too but until i see you in the next video be sure that you go and watch these videos in the meantime they'll help you so much more on your astrological and spiritual journey but until i see you next time thank you so so, so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. Adios.